Understanding beaver fur in English. Hello, and welcome to our English language learning series. Today, we're going to explore a phrase that might seem straightforward but has more to it than meets the eye. Beaver fur. Whether you've come across it in a book, a history lesson, or a fashion article, understanding this phrase is a great way to enhance your English vocabulary. So, let's dive in and unravel the layers behind beaver fur. When we break down the phrase beaver fur, we're dealing with two words, beaver, which is a type of animal, and fur, which refers to the thick hair that covers the body of many animals. Put together, beaver fur refers to the soft and dense hair that covers a beaver. Beavers are known for their thick fur, which has historically been highly valued for various uses, which leads us to our next section. Beaver fur has played a significant role in history, particularly in the fur trade. In the 17th and 18th centuries, beaver fur was used to make felt for high-quality hats that were fashionable in Europe and North America. The demand for beaver fur led to the exploration and settlement of new territories. Thus, the phrase can often be associated with trade, fashion, and colonial expansion. While beaver fur is not commonly used as an idiom, it can sometimes be part of expressions or cultural references, especially when discussing historical fashion or the fur trade era. For instance, saying someone has a beaver fur hat might not only describe the hat but also subtly imply something about the person's status or wealth, particularly in a historical context. In modern times, the use of beaver fur has become less common due to ethical concerns about fur trading and animal rights. It is more likely to appear in discussions about history, in literature, or when talking about vintage fashion. It's important to be aware of the ethical implications of using real animal fur in fashion and the shift towards synthetic alternatives. I hope this video has given you a deeper understanding of the phrase, beaver fur. It's a small but fascinating example of how language and history intertwine. Remember, learning English isn't just about grammar and vocabulary, it's also about cultural and historical contexts that give depth to the phrases we learn. Keep exploring, and see you in the next video.